All right, so let's go ahead and start with the visualization sheet for each financial ratio, starting with number one, the return on sales. So let's go back to our Tableau. And the very first thing we do now that we have our data, we can create our first worksheet. And that worksheet can be done in the following way. Let's go ahead and call this RO, ROS. So this is going to be our ROS. ROS, um, or, or why don't we just call it return on sales? Return on sales, to be specific. Well, we're gonna bold this, bold this, and make it this bold by pressing B, pressing OK. I could also center it if I needed to. I think it would look nicer if I were to center it. And that's it. So the very first thing I want to do is to create a comparison of my return on sales by the different years. So there's a few things that I need to do. Number one, what am I going to look for? Well, I need to look for the return on sales on one end. Uh, and then I'm going to look at the actual years. So I'm going to pivot this across time. I really don't like it this way. I really should switch it. So this is the way I'm going to switch it, right? This is the sum of the return on sales by everybody. Now, when you are making a comparison like this, it is always best to look at all of this and find the average, right? Looking at the average will make a little more sense because a ratio should not really be um, should not really be um, added up between companies. It should really be um, defaulted into a um, average instead of a sum. And I could switch this to be, instead of being a sum, I could switch this to an average. So this is the average of the return on sales for all of the companies that we have in our database. Even though that's not what we're looking for, this is great to see, right? We see that in 2008, the return on sales, a lot of people were losing money in 2008. That makes sense because it was a huge recession in 2008. We can see that big dip. All right. Now, we are in the business of uh, only looking at our data. So I have been assigned to IHG. And IHG happens to be, let's go back to the database real quick so that I can look at my data. If I were to look at uh, the data that belongs to me, Barra, I'm going to find that I was assigned to, dun -dun -dun -dun, uh, I was assigned to intern intercontinental hotels, which happens to be IHG, and the industry is going to be hotels. So that's great. I get to compare hotels. So the first thing I want to do, number one, is to say, for this year's, I want to group by year so that I am not having a continuous flow. Every line here is going to represent a year. That's number one. Number two, I want to make sure that this is the average, right? Number three, I want to make sure that I apply a filter so that only the data that I want to show, only the group that belongs to me, right, which is hotels. Notice that I click on the group, I dragged it into filter, and that gave me the option to look at hotels. So now I can apply this and look at only the data concerning hotels. And you see that there is a big dip in 2006, and then again 2008, and it didn't really recover until 2015 in terms of their average return on sales. Now, I want to make sure that I can compare all of my corporations within that, uh, um, that pivot graph. So I want to separate this by corporation. So I'm going to grab the corporation, right? And I am going to change it to say color. So now what I've done is I've added a component, a different dimension. I grab one of these dimensions and I said, let me color these lines by dimension. Now notice that I can have the International Hotel Group performing much, much better than the Hilton's or than the Marriott. And that is amazing to see. Beautifully done. This is really what we're looking for. Just average return on sales, fiscal year. It was three clicks and now I'm able to do it. Now I want to do another thing right here. I'm going to click here and edit the filter. Right, and I want to make sure that um, that I am able to 
switch this um, back and forth. So why don't I just say, um, let me put this on pause for just once. So all I have to do is go in here and say, let me show the filter. So now I can show the filter here, meaning that it's going to go on the right hand side. So technically I could just jump from one to the other. Who is this? You know, this is Tesla who was really doing really bad. If we were to take, get rid of Tesla, everything else would look super, super simple. So let me get rid of the filter, right? Um, and I could then switch this to say, you know, when I look at this, I want to be able to switch from one value to the other by, you know, dropping down the group. So then in here, I can say, all right, let me give you the hotel, or I could do the food and beverages, right? I could also do a uh, uh, drop down that is only selecting one single value, right? Like a drop down with a single value list. And then I could go from one to the other, and that would be amazingly nice. Um, and then I can switch to my hotel. Uh, so as long as you have to separate it, in color. Now, the next thing I need to do is make sure that my intercontinental hotel is considered to be red. So I'm going to go to uh, Tableau 20 and I'm going to make sure that this red, or let's do Tableau 10. I like this one right there, red, the blue, red, and brown. And I'm going to make sure that the hotel intercontinental hotel group which is the one that belongs to me and you have to do this for yourself the one that's assigned to you has to be red so then i apply it the one for marriott i can make it pinker and hilton can be blue so that let me apply it now now when i see this i can see that the red is the intercontinental hotel one last thing that i want to do i want to make sure that the name of the corporation is also put in the tooltip meaning that I should be able to see that. And that's already done. Hmm, maybe I need to put it on the label instead. Now uh, that's too annoying. Well, how about then we get rid of it because it's already being shown in the in the tooltip. How about we then see um, um, a label of just the ticker? Then that would be a little nicer. So the label would be at the very end, IHG, Hilton, and Marriott. Wonderful, this is already done. We're done with this particular spreadsheet. Do you wanna know how we do the next one? Well, it's very simple. We can just um, make sure that we are clicking on duplicating us across tab, and I can just say return on sales data, and that's gonna give me all of the information from 1999 to 2017, uh, and notice that there's no years for 2007 to 2010. That means that most likely Hilton was not owned in a publicly by a publicly traded stock symbol. It's possible that it was not trading during this year. So it's fine if you if you have it that way. All right. So then that is the next thing we have. Um, the next thing I want to do is the same thing over and over again. But now I'm going to go to the next field. So the next um, the next measurement that I need to do or visualize would be the return on assets. So it is very easy to do that by just duplicating my effort. So once I'm done with this, I can simply right click and say duplicate. And I can change this to the side. And I can call this return on my return on assets. So if I'm going to see how much net income I'm getting from my investment in assets, whether it's coming from capital investments or, or um, debt that I acquired, then I can just click this. And by the way, all I have to do is switch this to say, that's it. You could have redone this whole thing over again, or you could just replicate it like that. And then... Return on assets, when I duplicate it as a cross tab, all I have to say is this is my return on assets with 